In today's video, I'm going to show you a nice little prank device that you can make using an Arduino. In my case, I use an Arduino Uno R3 clone, the one that you see right here, without this board. This prototype PCB is the one that I made and added to the Arduino. And when I purchased this board, it also included a USB programming cable, as well as a set of pin headers right here, 4-pin, 5-pin, 3-pin, and I only paid around $9. The other components you will require for this project are as follows. 1 2N 4401 NPN transistor, 2 infrared LEDs which you can salvage from an old or broken infrared remote control, a 9 volt battery snap, 1 normally open momentary push button switch, a 56 ohm quarter watt resistor, and 10 ohm half watt resistor, one on off switch and a small prototype PCB. What this device does is allow you to turn off almost any TV within a matter of seconds from a considerable distance. I am going to place a link in the video description area so you can visit Ken Sharif's blog and get a better look at the schematic as well as download the necessary files to program the Arduino as a TV begun. What I'm going to do now is walk you through everything, then give you a simple demonstration using my 42-inch Samsung LCD TV. All right, let me start with the schematic. Let me move everything to the side here. Zoom in a little closer. All right, this is your Arduino. Now, the power supply here, I use 9 volts. I decided not to use three AA batteries, so mine is set up at 9 volts. Now because this Arduino is so inexpensive, like I said, around $9 shipped, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to be using this power jack that you normally plug in right here. See the power's on. Because I want to keep this as small as possible to fit inside of a project box, and I'm not going to be using this Arduino for another project, so I'm going to eliminate the power jack. That is why I did not mention it in your items that you need for this project, because I'm going to be cutting it off taking the black wire from the battery, soldering it directly to the board where the negative is on the side, and the red wire here, the positive, is going to go to an on-off switch on the side of the project enclosure, and the other side of the switch with the red wire is going to be soldered to the center pin of the DC jack or on this side of the diode. Now because I'm using a 9 volt power supply, and I would like to keep the current down to around 40 or 50 milliamps, I decided to use two 940 nanometer infrared LEDs in series with a 10 ohm resistor, which leads into the collector of the 2N4401 transistor. The emitter goes to battery negative or ground. And from pin 3 of the digital outputs on the Arduino, that will connect to a 56 ohm quarter watt resistor into the base of the NPN transistor. Pin 13 is the LED on the Arduino board, so you have nothing to worry about with regards to setting that up. There's nothing to be done there. Now the infrared emitters that I chose to use are 940 nanometer. It's a very narrow beam. You can use wide beam LEDs, or you could use a combination of each. If you'd like to increase the range of this TV Begon device, then what you would have to do is drive this infrared emitter with higher current to increase your range. If you'd like to do that, then you're going to have to ditch the 9 volt battery because it's not going to supply enough current. Then you could do what was shown here. I would actually have four of these batteries, four double A's connected in series and a flat pack or a square pack giving you six volts. Then you can have two or more infrared LEDs lined up right here each one having their own current limiting resistor so you can control how much current flows through the infrared LEDs and that would greatly increase your range. Now I'm very satisfied with the 9 volt setup. I'm getting around 35, 40 feet away from the TV that it kills it and it's also a lot easier just to have a 9 volt battery in there than having four double A's. Once the Arduino TV Begone device is powered up in order to trigger it to go through all the codes to search for the code that will turn your TV off. You're going to have to ground pin 2 and that is why you're going to need the normally open push button switch. Now if you're going to be using this in Europe, you're going to have to connect pin 5 of the digital outputs to ground as well. 
and what that does is activates the European code scanning for the Arduino. And that is about it. You're looking at an extremely simple device to put together. I'll show you mine up close. I wanted it super compact. There's the two LEDs right here. I made mine just like this so you could duplicate yours. I have the pin headers. There's a set here and a set here. If you're going to want to use this in Europe, you're going to want to be able to ground pin 5. So make sure the pin header here is 6 pin and then you can leave 4 at the other end going towards where it says pin 13, 12 and ground. Everything's assembled on the board. It just goes in nicely at the very end, like that. Now the power for the LEDs is going to connect to the VIN, voltage in, coming from the power side of the Arduino, which connects right after the diode here. So if you're using a 9 volt battery, you're going to notice this will be around 8.3, 8.4 volts, and that's due to the voltage drop across that diode. So the voltage in is just like connecting to your battery, but going through the diode. The next thing I'm going to do now is take you step by step on my computer showing how you program the Arduino device. Alright, so now we're at Ken's blog. Right over here is the link that you're going to click to download the files to program the Arduino using the Arduino software, which I'm going to show you how to set up in a minute. Once it's downloaded, you're going to have a zip file as you can see right here. You're going to extract that file. You're going to see three parts when extracted, main.h, tvb.pde, and worldcodes.cpp. The next thing you're going to want to do is install the Arduino software. This link will be posted in the video description area as well. Scroll down the page, and depending on your operating system, you choose the one you want to install. In my case, it's Linux, 32 bits. Once you have the software installed on your computer and you have up-to-date USB drivers, you will then be able to program your Arduino. Let me show you how that's done. You can see at the very bottom down here, where I'm pointing with the arrow, it says Arduino Uno on DEV TTY USB O. Once the Arduino is connected to your computer, then you're going to go to File. Click on File and Open. Open a sketch. So I'm going to go to there and to down Downloads, TBB, and there it is, TBB.PDE. Open. You can scroll down and see it has opened up the files. Here's your world codes. All right, that's all different codes for different TVs. Another file here, main. So now you're, you're ready. The next step would be to click this arrow to the right where it says upload. When you click it, you're going to see down here in this box, show you the results, and it should say upload complete. When it says upload complete, you can close out the window. At this point, you're all ready to use your device. I'm going to now give you a short demonstration using my Samsung 42-inch LCD TV. Now before I demonstrate using the 42-inch Samsung LCD TV, what I wanted to do is just reduce the amount of light in this room and show you when I push the momentary button, you can see all the pulses coming off the transmitter. Now the pulses will last between 20 and 30 seconds. That's how long it takes to go through all the codes on all the different TVs. So let's give the button a push. And as you can see, to the unaided eye, all you see is a very faint red glow on the LEDs. And using the camera, it does very well at detecting infrared. You can see it going along nicely. This is also a great way to check a remote control in your house. If you suspect it's not working properly, just pick up your remote control, aim it towards your cell phone camera, and see if you see the pulses like you see here. If you do, you're going to know the battery's good and there's nothing wrong with the remote control. 
All right, I'm back about 25 feet from the television. I'm going to point the Arduino directly at the TV right here. And it's going to scan through all the codes. And when the right code has been found, the TV will go off. Here we go. And there you have it. It only took a few seconds to find that code. And as you can see, it's still putting out more codes for other televisions. It does work very well. If you enjoyed this video, please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.